So I thought it would be fun to do a wedding cake that features landmarks from three cities. For some apparent reason, we've shown up to no power this morning. Without power in these refrigerators, if we leave the cakes in as is, we've got about two hours before we have to go to plan B. I'm meeting with Marissa and Rob today to find out what kind of cake they want. First of all, tell me about the wedding. The main theme that we're trying to string through the whole wedding weekend is our parallel paths. And what I mean by that is that uh, Rob was out in LA for about eight years. Okay. And I was in New York for seven. Okay. And we didn't know one another. And then we both moved back to the middle, as I like to say, to Minnesota. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we met. And I know we would love if our cake kind of embodied that. You've got basically a tale of three cities happening. Yes. So so I love the idea for the cake. For sure, New York and Minneapolis, we're going to do skyscrapers. I think it would be fun if the overall silhouette of the cake was frighteningly tall and thin. I like it. So yes. we'll make the yeah. silhouette look like a skyscraper in and of itself to begin with. We'll give New York the top, mm -hmm. and then we'll do LA down here. And then we'll do Minneapolis in the middle. And I think we can do the whole thing in black and white and have the only red be the heart. She got us immediately. She got our stories immediately. And right in front of us drew this fabulous cake that embodied everything we wanted. Are you familiar with the cherry and the spoon? Yeah. Absolutely. Sculpture? OK, I figured. That's, I mean, that's Minneapolis. Absolutely. That is Minneapolis. I think it would be really cool if we lit up the cherry. <gasps> now we're talking. OK. Now we're talking. <laughs> cool. cool. Wow. We're cool. Everyone recognizes the cherry and the spoon, and to have it light up and pop at the top so of the cool. cake is just, it, it's really cool. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Thank and we'll you. see you guys shortly. Yeah. Yes, you will. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, you will. Good. I just met with Marissa and Rob. Cool. Ooh. And um, basically, we want all of the iconic buildings. Oh, that'd be cool. I think that'll be really fun. And we're going to uh, we're gonna light the sucker up. Nice. Sweet. So we're going to put you on. Research, okay. and I need the buildings all sized, and I will start figuring out how to get the spoon made. Awesome. Perfect. OK. We're on it. OK, so this is the cherry and the spoon sculpture that we're going to be making. And uh, what we need to do is I've got a spoon. We need to bend it so that it can hold up my fondant while it dries. Do you think if we bend it over the edge of the table? We can try that. <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, wait. I got something better. I got something better. Okay. Hammer it. Do you think we should brace it down? It's just gonna fly. At me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we got it. We don't have it. Spoon. We got it. Now that we've got the mold for the spoon, we're going to cut out the fondant and dry it over that mold so that we get the shape just right. Hi, Robin. Hey, how's it going? Good. What have we got today? OK, this is what we got. My father-in-law helps out a lot around here. We call him Magic Phil um, because he I can give him any problem, and he can magically solve it. He's a retired engineer. He builds all of my cake stands, and he can pretty much do anything. So whenever I have a problem that I need to solve, I'll call in Magic Phil. But then I promised them that I knew a guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, he could light up the cherry light on the cherry in the spoon. OK. OK. And then I want the new stand to look like our light fixture, so it's going to be almost like craftsman style. And how much is this thing going to weigh? Gonna weigh a good 80 pounds. 80 pounds, okay. Make the bride happy. The proportions. She'll love you. <laughs> Before they met, Marissa lived in New York and Rob lived in LA. 
and they came to Minneapolis and met each other within two weeks of moving back. So I thought it would be fun to do a cake that featured the iconic features of the skylines from those three cities. How are they coming? Uh, almost done, just finishing the Statue of Liberty's head. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I got you on this most stressful part. Yeah, exactly. All right. Julie, an arm. I am working on the generic buildings now so that you can kind of fill in. When you get done with that one, I want you to do a row of these okay. across here. And then we can stencil maybe something over the bottom so we still have some white. Okay. And I'll start getting stuff ready for us to stencil some of these. I love stenciling because the look when it's completed is beautiful. But while you're doing it, it's risky because anything can happen. All right. So you all set? Definitely the most worried about this Chrysler building. The Chrysler building was, um, it's my favorite building in New York. And um, I'm gonna leave that to Jenna because she's kind of the stencil queen. There's nowhere to hold it. I know, there's nowhere <laughs> to hold it. Look good? Looks good from here. Hopefully it doesn't move while I'm scraping frosting over it. Right. Cross your fingers. Time for the unveil. Oh, nice. Awesome. That's weird a little bit on top, but oh, we can clean that up. There's a reason why we call Jenna the stencil queen. Ah. Dang. Oh, we didn't panty it. No, we didn't. We're getting clogs in the tip um, because this is such a fine tip that what we do is we take a nylon um, and we actually strain the frosting through the nylon, which we like to call the panty. You put, you strain it through into the bag, and then theoretically, all of the, the lumps of sugar stay in here. And then this is just pure, pure gold for piping. Brian and Magic Phil have gone to the workshop to create a cherry that will light up for the top of the cake. Brian. Good to see you. Hey. I got balls. You got some of the stuff? Oh, yes, boy. We need indeed. them. So this is Robin what I got. comes up with ideas faster than we can find solutions. Indeed. OK, so I got a bunch of stuff here. I ran around to a handful of places. Christmas ornaments? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, Christmas ornament is a good place to start. Unfortunately, it's too big. She wants something okay. about that big. The cherry on the spoon presents an interesting challenge. It has to be red, it has to be a certain size, and the light has to shine through it. Ping pong ball? Oh, that's got a couple of good things going for it. It's not red, but we could spray paint it. I've got some cherry paint. OK, we can try that. And we can try that. There it is. Let's see how that looks. Check it out. Oh, hey, that's Bang. good. I need to get that. Oh, look at that, though. That's a uh, cherry. Now, all we have to do is figure out how to make this cherry light up on the cake. For some apparent reason, we've shown up to no power this morning. So, we're, uh, I'm gonna call the electric company and see what's going on, and hopefully it'll just be a little glitch. Without power in these refrigerators, if we leave the cakes in as is, we've got about two hours before we have to go to plan B. Um, Cause it'll get down to room temperature in about two hours. So if we have to take box up no, cakes and take them to our houses, we'll do it. Won't that be fun? Sorry, our representatives are assisting other callers right now. They're out of power all the way down to 494. So you didn't do it. Credit card options. Means you don't have to call anymore. Unless you're enjoying this. I kind of enjoy it. It comforts me. And I'm learning about insulating my home. People, get a little quiet in this place. Yeah, they got power over there. We can't just sit around for four hours waiting for the electricity to come back on. So we're going to have to find another place to mix this mousse. We just can't afford to lose this much time. If we don't have power, we're going to find a place that has it. Okay. We're going to cross over to the south of the border. <laughs> come on, can't turn, turn down three girls with a mixer? Did you try opening the door? Oh. <laughs> it's open. Okay. 
Hello? Uh, buenos dias? We're from the bakery right across the street. Would it be okay if I if I plugged in my mixer here for a minute? Oh, sorry, I made a little, little speak in English. Oh, okay. Can um here. Can I um can I plug in my mixer in your wall? To mix? Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. perfect. Good. Come on in. I think he's a little bit afraid of us. Okay. Which is kinda good. Never made cake in a Mexican restaurant before. <laughs> Shoot, I lost. Oh, go, stop. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Let's hope this doesn't become a habit. Oh! oh. Benton's open, sign is on. I think we've got power. Do we have power? We have power! Yay! <laughs> Hooray! We have power! We're working on the um, filling and frosting. Uh, and then we'll decorate. The we'll best decorate. part. And hopefully there will be no more trips across the street. Hey, Jenna, how many calories are in a batch of this? Um, <laughs> 57,000 <laughs> calories in a batch of buttercream. We want to roll or wet? Wet. Okay. How convenient, because I would rather roll. That's why we make a great team. Jenna, this whole thing looks completely weird. It's not plum. It looks like it's going like that to me. It must be that the fondant was rolled thicker there. Whoops. We've got nothing that's going to mask this, so this front has to look. It's like the only tier that like has to look good. <sighs> Jenna, this whole thing looks completely weird. It's not plum. We just finished fondanting all the cakes, and I noticed that the bottom tier is a little bit crooked, and we're kind of tight on time now, so we're just going to have to come up with a solution quick. I'm just you looking at that. Look at that. Right side? Is that what's going on? I think so. That, that looks like it's hanging corner. low on that corner. Yeah. When you're really type A and a perfectionist, um, things like that, I, a lot of people would roll with that, and it wouldn't even affect them, but it really kind of makes me want to light my hair on fire. What we think happened is that the fondant was a little bit thicker on one side, and so it was coming down a little, so we just trimmed underneath it, and that's making it a lot more square. We've already got everything frosted, filled, and now we get to put on all of the buildings that we've made, and we get to attach these little lights to them. We're putting a light in here, and we have to make sure that it fits in enough so that it doesn't end up breaking these buildings when we put them in there. Jenna, you ready to hit the lights for me? This is it. This is the moment of truth. If these lights don't work on the cake, the whole concept is blown. Marissa and Rob lived in New York and LA before they came back to Minneapolis and met one another. So I thought it would be fun to make a wedding cake for them that features all of the iconic buildings in the skylines of those three cities. We're putting a light in here and we have to make sure that it fits in enough so that it doesn't end up breaking these buildings when we put them in there. Jenny, you ready to hit the lights for me? On it. This is it. This is the moment of truth. If these lights don't work on the cake, the whole concept is blown. I can see that it's doing something. I can see the blue glowing. What you want to make sure is that this is going to fit flush against these two buildings. OK. Success. Yeah, that'll show. Well, good. That's neat. All right, it's time to get this cake finished and on the road. We're getting ready to leave, and so the one last thing we have to do is light up the cherry. When you think of Minneapolis, you think of the cherry and the spoon. A lot of times the uh, 
bride and groom keep this stuff, don't they? Yeah. They'll probably keep it. And yeah, they'll probably keep this one. Put it on their mantle, and then someday their kids will throw it out after they've died and say, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> As usual, Magic Phil has come through, and the cherry is lighting up. It's ready to go. OK, let's pack this baby up. I think, really, my title should be OCD for hire. So another thing that we do differently is we never deliver a cake stacked. Um, our cakes are boxed up separately, each tier, and transported, so there's no chance of them tipping, shifting, doing terrible things in the car. How are they doing back there? They're hanging. You just got to remember you got cakes in the car. Keep barking in my ear. It'll probably help me remember. Uh-huh. I think I'll keep that <laughs> up. The worst thing that could happen to a cake would be you know, a complete cake wreck of a delivery. This isn't the kind of thing that you have a spare in the freezer. So that's why we take every possible precaution. The thing I love most about this is the reactions that I get from my clients when they come up to me and they say, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. I made them their dream cake. There's nothing better than that. Thank you. You're a monster. years. This is a cake to us, but it's Marissa's wedding cake. And I like these people, and I want them to have the best wedding cake. I want them to be, hear about it for years. I want them to get sick of hearing about their wedding cake. Amazing, amazing it cake. So it was, it's beautiful, and it tastes amazing to food. It brought our story to life, and we just can't think of a better way to kick this off. Exactly. We couldn't so be happier. Sad. Because I spent so much time with it, it's like sending your kid off to kindergarten every time you leave one behind. If the teacher cut him up and ate him. <laughs> the teacher cut him up and ate him. Right.